Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW News of the Week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, the big news article was that Blizzard is, after all, selling Trader's Tender on the cash shop with an extra step. This month, Blizzard released the Corsage pack for sale, which includes two wrist transmogs and 200 tenders for five US big ones. This is not what I had in mind when Ian said that Tender wasn't going to go on the cash shop, but might be used in bundles. In my naive brain, I was envisioning like, you know, collector's edition bundles or six month sub pack bundles. You know, things that are a little less, for lack of a better word, spammable. The wrist transmogs in question will appear on the trader's post later. Uh, not for a couple of months, but they will show up later on down the line. So this is kind of a weird new era of cash shop cosmetics that you can sort of get for free, but you could also pay for to get them sooner and then get more other stuff for free later. I'm not thrilled about it, but I'm also not terribly surprised. I don't think it's going to ruin the game for me. I do think that the future of WoW is going to include many new and creative ways for them to position these cosmetic microtransactions to make them more and more appealing and to keep, um, you know, like cranking on that FOMO lever to get collectors to bite. They're definitely not the only game to do it, which doesn't make it like a cool thing to do. But um, maybe game development and like continued development of these like constant updates that you get, maybe that just can't be justified anymore on just box sales and a sub fee when other games can do that same thing, but then also have all of this, you know, <laughs> extra money from all of the goodies. So as long as they keep making raids and dungeons and content that I like to do, I suppose I can limit myself to eyebrow raising at the cosmetics and then also the, the not buying them. <laughs> I do think, though, on the topic of not buying them and whether or not people will bite for this bundle, obviously in the short term you can tell if somebody's purchased it because that's the only way to get those wrist transmogs, but later on down the road you wouldn't necessarily know, and I think it's actually a really clever way for them to kind of destigmatize shop cosmetics. Not that they have the same stigma that they used to, but you know, you would see somebody walking around with something from the trader's post and you wouldn't necessarily know if they saved up their free tender for it or if they purchased extra tender in order to afford it um, or if they got it directly with a tender bundle. Being able to get shop cosmetics without paying real money has been a thing since the WoW token, basically. You always could, you know, save up a bunch of gold, buy a token, and then use that token to buy shop stuff. But um, this is kind of like a new interesting flavor of it. Speaking of the trading post, our new fill the bar reward for August is here. It's the Blood Hunters transmog set. I'm sure you've seen this around by now. You can transmog this for any armor type. It includes an item in every single slot except for bracers, and it's pretty bootylicious if you decide to hide the cloak. <laughs> Other things of note on this month's trading post is this transmogrifier toy, not to be confused with the Soul Trader pet and not to be confused with the Transmorpher beacon toy from the shop. This lets you place just a regular transmogrifier NPC who will last for 10 minutes on a 10 minute cooldown, which is a pretty short cooldown for something useful like this. This means that if you're in the middle of a raid and you cannot mount and you decide that you just don't feel cute anymore, you can fix that. <laughs> I believe it was 650 tender, which meant that I couldn't get one of the mounts this time around. And I decided that was worth it because when you don't feel cute, your throughput's not going to be the same, and we all know it. Uh, Blizzard also, on the topic of the Trading Post, posted a preview of some new class sets that are going to be coming on down the line. They are three-piece sets that include helm, belt, and shoulder combos for each class. There will also be separately available class-specific weapons, so if you like the look of this stuff, then I guess it's time to start saving your tender now. <laughs> I don't know. I've given up on being able to afford even very much of the stuff. I'm just, I, I take what I can get and then I <laughs> try not to look. Other transmoggy news, because we're really in, in a quiet zone for <laughs> actual content news right now. Uh, Trial of Style is back and will continue to be back for a couple more days as you see this. Uh, you can check the start and end dates in your in-game calendar. There are no new rewards this time around, so if you fully caught up with the most recent Trial of Style, you are all set. But if you didn't catch up with the most recent Trial of Style, they added a ton of stuff then. So it's worth taking a look at that vendor if you're not sure to see if you're missing anything. Um, the skull caps are really cool in particular. I like putting those on my Kul'Tearns. Other news, Classic Hardcore has an official launch date now. It will be beginning for realsies on August the 24th, so just a couple of weeks. That is the permadeath mode of WoW Classic. It sounds pretty fun. If I can pull myself out of my transmog hole, which is not a guarantee, I'm pretty addicted, but if I can do that, I might try and see how far I can get in Hardcore Classic just for kicks and because that's a story that has an ending, it's just a question of when. In my life this week, in real life, I am currently embroiled 
in exploring the possibility of maybe adopting a dog if I can find the right one and if the right one can find me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone who's been there will feel me when I say that it's a little bit all consuming. I feel like I've seen the profiles for every single dog within like a five hour travel radius, which is quite a few. <laughs> And then in my wow life lately, no evoker legendary yet, but there's always next week. However, for anybody at all that cares or would be happy for me, after 174 kills, Foreman Thistlenettle finally decided to drop me his Foreman's Gloves, which is a transmog unique appearance that I was farming. Um, so shout out to Foreman Thistlenettle. I can leave him alone now. <laughs> And questions for this week, Arcane either wants to know, does cross-realm trading affect work orders at all? Suppose it doesn't, since mailing doesn't work, but I can't seem to find anyone talking about it. So I had a good think about this, and I could be wrong, but I don't see any way that there's going to be like a direct impact on work orders, because most of the things that you're work ordering are soulbound anyways. So if the work order crafter and the person that needs the thing are not on the same server, no amount of transferring materials or gold to other servers is going to help. The best you could do is if you need a rare material that's somehow not a commodity that's already region wide. You could maybe go buy that off realm, but I think that you're I think that you're fine. I think that work orders are an on realm system and they are unlikely to change in that respect. And then Rober wants to know, how has the fishing been this year? It has been good when I managed to get out. Um, I've been doing basically only ocean fishing so far. I did all lake fishing last year, and then this year has been all ocean shore fishing, so rockfish. I still haven't caught my lingcod yet, but I did catch kelp greenling for the first time recently. Uh, bizarrely enough, they wanted a, a salmon worm lure, which I was just throwing for fun because nothing else was working. And I was very surprised when something bit it because I don't think they've ever seen a worm before. They're greenling, but <laughs> you never know. But yeah, it's been awesome. I plan to keep rock fishing until the end of rockfish season, which is kind of September-ish around here, and then switch back to lakes to go look for trout in the fall. And Aya Semisaki wants to know, imagine if you lived in WoW. What race would you be and what location would be your ideal place to have a house? If I lived in WoW, I think I would have a lot of concerns. <laughs> the real world stresses me out enough without like old god whispers and, you know, giant swords left unattended in the desert. <laughs> I see myself as a gnome or a human because as far as I can tell, I'm a human in real life. Living in Stormsong Valley, so the northern zone of the Kul Tiras zones, with like one of those little cute houses and then like cats and a big dog and a little garden. And then every time the weather changes, which is often because it's Stormsong Valley, she would complain to her cats and or dog about how the Tide Sages are at it again. Every single time. <laughs> I feel like all of the rain and the bees that they have out there would make for some lovely gardening. <laughs> And that's been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer on a news video, please pop them in the comments of the most recent one and include the word question to help me find them. I appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.